CPU here, which has been developed mainly by uh, Yoki Rosa, which is a pure CPU code, which takes basically the same methodology as Aten, uh, but uh, on the AMI grid, but which is a pure CPU code. So first, Aten. So as I said previously, Aten was uh, thought to provide light to Ramses, and uh, this is a bus process. This is a bus process in reality transfer code. It works on a fixed Cartesian grid. And uh, this is a loaded GPU code, and this is a, a full GPU code. Uh, let me uh, explain this just after. So the way it works is like this. So you provide uh, the code, a gas density field, and a source on a Cartesian grid. And the code first performs the calculation of the, the relative transport. So in order to do that, basically, we solve conservative transport equation to use the uh, M1 description of the relative transport equations. And, uh, in practice, what does the code is, is that uh, it solves explicitly conservative equations, like you would do for uh, like you would do for a standard uh, hydro code. Uh, something which is good with the grid-based hydro code. Uh, something which is interesting in this process is that when you solve such kind of equation on a regular grid, on a Cartesian grid that, that isn't uh, dynamical, well, there is a fixed and predictable number of operations. You know exactly where the data is. Uh, you can do a lot of optimization, which um, uh, consists mostly of uh, ensuring that you have coalescent memory access, that you have uh, aligned mem that you have uh, aligned um, aligned data in memory. So stuff that are always important for programming in general, but are, which are really critical for GPU programming. And and uh, and, uh, and in second stage. Uh, Aten, the aim of Aten is not only to compute so the transport of radiation, but also to compute the impact of radiation on matter, so mainly chemistry and heat and cooling processes. And those processes are so good for GPUs because they are highly independent. Basically, you don't really need to know what happens in the neighbors when you want to compute uh, cooling rates, for example, uh, or ionization uh, equations. And uh, they involve a high load. They typically involve uh, high complex uh, calculations, which are really suited, which are really good for GPUs. So independent to high load. So this part is easily optimized, uh, can be easily optimized, and this part is uh, uh, involve uh, complex calculations and uh, independent calculations. So the reason why I said that Aten was a, a, a full GPU code is that the whole code would run fully on the GPU. With no transfer between the host and the device, which means that you would send the initial conditions to the devices, plural, because uh, actually there is an MPI implementation of Tdaten, so which means that devices should communicate with each other through MPI. Uh, and uh, once in a while, you had to extract data from the GPUs to have snapshots, of course, but uh, everything is being performed on the GPU, which is really good because, like this, you, you limit. Uh, the impact of transfer between the host uh, and the devices. Like uh, someone said yesterday, basically the, the straw is not, a, it's not really uh, an issue. Okay? You, you don't have to, trans to transfer data uh, very often between the host and the devices. Okay. So in the end, this is what we have This is a very old plot, but uh, actually that's the only one that I have left for today. And so in single precision, we achieved an XAT acceleration factor. Okay single precision, because at that time we only had a single precision uh, devices, well, well, mostly. And uh, uh, this is, a, I, I won't spend too much time on, on this plot, but uh, this is a multi-GPU code, and we were, we were able to, to hide the communication in an efficient way, and it would only represent, even on the GPU, they would represent only a, a, a small fraction of the, of the time step. Uh, it could represent like 15, 20 percent. Of the, of the whole time step. So we were able to do multi GPU in an efficient way. So we did stuff like this. I will be very quick on, the, on that. So for example, we ran a 2048 QA relative transfer calculation on the QE uh, supercomputer uh, on 256 devices. So this is the kind of first thing that we have. Uh, more recently, uh, one of my um, uh, collaborators uh, tried to simulate uh, the, the, um, the, the history of immunization of the local group. So, and basically, its conclusion that we found in this paper is that for a large class of source models in EQA and M31, we are in isolation if we don't consider external influence by nearby clusters. In other words, uh, the EQA don't ionize uh, M31 and this person. 
Um, so as I said previously, there is a, a Ramses uh, and Atto couple version where the two code, Ramses and Ada and Qdata, just exchange data. This one running on the CPU, this one running on GPUs to 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 take uh, to take care of the coupling, to get some coupling between radiation and um, and the hydro lines. So this code will be used uh, very soon on Titan for an inside project on 8,000 GPUs. So the, the PI of this project is Paul Shapiro, and this part is uh, is led by Bechero, the same guy as the previous one for the Ramses engine. Okay, so now a few words about uh, the, what I've been doing now. So the thing is that Aton was a bus processing relative transfer code, so we want to go further on that, we want to couple the physics. And uh, also Aton was a code that would be able to run only on a fixed unit grid. Okay, so I wanted to see if it's possible to make uh, an AR code which would take advantage somehow of uh, accelerators. Uh, in retrospect, it's, uh, it wasn't a so good idea because it's difficult, honestly. And um, the thing is also that the numbers that I'm going to show after are less spectacular than, than the one I showed previously, uh, but I probably understand why. Uh, but, uh, well, I, I can't understand what I can't make, so it, just, it was a, a good way to understand how any code are being made. So its name is Emma. Of the code, some of you may have heard of it uh, under the name Quartz. Quartz is the prototype name. Emma is the final name of the code. Uh, actually, it was easier to, to sell in order to be funded to develop this code, so that's why uh, that's why the name is Emma now. It, uh, so it, uh, Emma, Emma stands for Electromagnetism Mechanics on Attachment Mesh, the perfect gravity, hydro, and rotating transfer on AMR, multi GPU, so the GPU part is, is coded with CUDA, and this is a hybrid code. So here are all the basic ingredients that are in there. So nothing here is original, so to say. And those are very basic. Some of them are actually not state of the art procedure. But for gravity, well, we, we have particles. We project particles on this using a CRC, uh, the standard CRC procedure. And the question solver is a material solver. For hydro, we're using standard recipes as well. And for radiation, it's pretty much the transposition of what we developed with Aten. So this is a moment-based description of radiative transfer with the M1, uh, M1 closure relation, and uh, also the, this, uh, this uh, ingredients. And the logistics, so uh, basically data logistics, as I said previously. So this is a fully treated tree in Mark with MPI-based parallelization, specific uh, domain decomposition, recession tree, and three C. So, to picture, just to show that uh, we're able to produce some stuff. So, this is a cosmological simulation. Here on the left, you have a pure hydro simulation. Here on the right, this is a, a simulation with relative transfer where we try to refine a longer ionization phase. Just to see what's going on. Okay. Uh, this is another test, relative transfer test. This is a, the standard uh, ELF test, five test, the expansion of an H2 region where you have the ionization profile and here the density profile. And you can see that actually it's been refined on front. So yeah, so a few words about the technical aspects of this. So this is a fully threaded code, and uh, we use the description of AMR that has been provided by Cockroach 1997. And this is the same philosophy that's underlying the code like art on Ramses. So basically cells are connected to each other to pointers. They're not, uh, there is no... There is no simple mapping between the way cells are stored in memory and the, and the way cells are stored physically in the volume. Okay. So all the connections are dealt with pointers. Particles are also included in cells with pointers. And uh, the thing with, chest, with such a description of the AMR is that you have a complex memory access patterns. You don't know by advance and you don't know by advance how you will access the cells because of course cells can disappear and uh, appear. It's dynamic, it's unpredictable. When you try to see the memory pattern access, they're basically random, but not random, but they're extremely hard to predict, so it's not really good for GPUs. So what I did is that I designed a code like this. So I have an AMR tree, which is here, and everything which is related to AMR, basically, creating cells, marking cells, and so on, dealing with the, the dynamical trees performed by the CPU. Uh, all the physical calculations are here on the right and are done on accelerators in a general sense. Okay, so an accelerator could be a single core, which doesn't accelerate compared to a single core. Uh, it could be a multi-core CPU, could be a GPU, could be a Zen 5, air around, whatever. 
Okay, why very can you imagine that is able to handle calculation? Okay. So for a moment, I have two versions of the code, actually. Which one is the single core standard CPU calculation and uh, a GPU version? Okay. And in between these two aspects, you have a gather and scatter operation. Because, I mean, for GPU, this is for, for sure, and I'm pretty sure that it's true for whatever would come as any kind of accelerator, you should vectorize your data in some way. Okay. You should align your data, you should make it the most uh, uh, accelerator friendly as you could. And uh, the, the accelerator, so the, the most friendly shape that you can give to your data is to put it in arrays, flat arrays, with uh, while you would take care of alignments and coalitions of memory accesses. Okay. But of course, since you're starting from such kind of data layout, you must have a gather and scatter operations in between, and uh, that should handle going from this side to this side. Uh, one, uh, one interesting thing is that because you decouple your data from your calculation, is that here you can put whatever you want. So as I said, you can change from one architecture to another okay, without changing the layout here. The other thing is that you can also do the converse. You may find a more efficient way to handle the data and keep the same calculating module. So that's what I had in mind when I designed it. But of course, this thing has this thing has a cost, which is quite high and was here turning. Uh, all the API communications are performed on the, on the CPU side. And also the vectors here don't have to be as large as the whole set of data here. You can actually put things in the vector and stream data. Okay. And that's how it proceeds. Uh, by the way, how do we vectorize? There are several ways to do this. So imagine you have, you want to compute some values here and you need the orange values here. So you flatten your data like this, you, that you would send for, for any kind of accelerator. And for example, to compute this value here, you need the orange one. And the information you can provide along with your vectors is the neighbor values. Okay. So it means that you have a redundancy of your data. Okay. But there you can really constrain the coalescence and optimi optimization. Uh, and really optimize the way you, you, you store the data or you store address in pointers, basically. But of course, it reduces the optimization that you're able to do. Okay. So the numbers. Uh, so this is a four uh, cosmological run with uh, typically, as far as I remember, two or four levels of refinement. So this is a single core calculation on the cosmological run, typical cosmological run. And this is what I've taken on a single GP. So here, this is for gravity in blue, hydro there, and the radiative transfer here. And as you can see, I can compress pretty much the calculation, but it's not spectacular. Okay. So for hydrodynamics and radiation, uh, I have an extended acceleration factor compared to single core calculation in double precision. Okay. If you like to do the same calculation in single precision, it's probably twice the acceleration factor. But for gravity, for instance, I mean, there's no acceleration at all. Uh, so why is it so? Uh, just have a, another look here. So this is so this, those are GPU timings, and here you see the time being spent in calculations and in communications. Okay, the blue part in communications and calculations being here uh, as great. And as you can see, once you you have vectorized the data and set it to accelerators, you're really able to crunch numbers very efficiently. Okay, but in the end. You're limited by your ability to gather and scatter efficiently data for the tree to do accelerators. And for example, for gravity, the issue is that when you solve gravity the way I do using multiple solver, I mean the, the amount of calculations that you perform are actually really small. I mean you iterate over a very simple operation, which means that the ratio of data that you get and the, uh, to the calculation that you should do is not really good. In the end, you spend off most of the time doing calculation that you don't perform. You, uh, you spend most of the time doing communication, but you don't perform calculations. Well, hydro and radiation, it's very really good because, okay, there's some amount of communications, but there are a lot of calculations that can be crushed by accelerators. So there's still a lot of room for optimization in here. Okay, so that's basically what I said. Of course, the size of the vector has some impact. Okay, so as I said, I stream vectors to the accelerators. So this is on the GPU again. This is for another test. But as you can see, the, the larger, the, larger the, the, the array being sent to the GPU, uh, the better the, the performances are. Uh, here you see that when you have arrays that are too small, 
Well, there are several effects. First, you increase the impact of the cadre and scatter overhead. Okay, it could be latencies, could be uh, I suck at coding and so on. Okay, so this is, those are source of uh, latencies. And of course, with small arrays, you're not also able anymore to feel the GPU's absolute power, so to say. Okay, you underuse them. Uh, as I said, something which is nice is that you can actually uh, stream data, but simultaneous, uh, there is a lot of asynchronous uh, capabilities on your own GPU. So you can send four, uh, instead of doing one gather, one computation, and one scatter, you can split it, for example, in four, and overlay calculations and gathering and scattering operation in order to compress the, the, to, to compress the time step. And we, we have some gain by launching more than one uh, simultaneous threads. And just to worry about scaling multi GPU scaling for very small configurations, the 864 GPUs on Python are, it's okay for the moment. Okay, so basically that's my last slide, so I'm, I'm finished. So just to say that there are a lot of your ingredients in this code. Some of them important on GPUs, some of them are being handled on CPU. I try as much to give to, to, uh, to either CPU or GPU uh, to give them tasks that are the best for but uh, there's still uh, a lot of room for, for optimization, so that's basically where I am today.